I know that I don't need to tell this audience in the room or online that there are many different things and factors that can cause us problems with our Wi-Fi. And it could be any one of these things or any combination of these things that we see on screen. So it could be the fact that you've got a bad design, it could be the fact that you've had a bad configuration, or perhaps even some outside interference causing us some problems on our network. But I think I can get all of us to agree on one thing. The most common factor, I think, and I believe all of you will as well, the things that cause us the most issues on our network is actually our client devices. These give us the most headaches. You can have newer devices that work okay, but if you're in a scenario or in an environment that has devices like scanners, infusion pumps, and in medical environments, these can be really challenging devices to try and support and make run well on your network. And I think few of you know this guy in the room, Dobius. He wasn't the first person to say this statement, but he was the last person I heard to say it. So now it sticks with me. And yeah, the Wi-Fi would work so well if we didn't have any client devices. But we need, that's what's the point of having Wi-Fi networks if we're not going to have any Wi-Fi client devices. And I've actually seen firsthand Dobius preparing himself to try and protect his HP Aruba networks from some of these client devices. And sometimes he does a good job of doing that, but sometimes it gets a little bit hard trying to fix and understand that problem client device. And don't worry, Dobius, I can see you sweating a bit at the back. I'm not going to play the video of where this was from. It's OK. But if any of you in the room wanted to ask him when we was in Prague last year where this video came from, you can try and ask him whether he'll tell you or not. I don't know. But if he won't tell you, you can actually try asking his son, Espen, who is uh, also here somewhere, but not here in the room right now. But then actually, I was thinking, you know what? Espen is Dobius's son, so the likelihood that Espen will tell his father's secrets is probably quite low. So Espen might not tell you. Hans might. Hans sitting at the back of the room going, oh, God, Matt, please don't play the video. And uh, if Hans won't tell you, Tom will certainly tell you. He's happy to shout and tell you where this special helmet came from when we was out in Prague last year. But anyway, back to Echohau and the new feature that we're going to talk and show you today is uh, something I'm very excited and passionate about. Before I tell you the feature, I want to go over a little story first about why I think this is going to be really beneficial for all of us in the room. So a little while ago, we did a warehouse deployment. We designed it. We deployed it. We did the validation. Everything was working really, really well for all of our newer client devices, our phones, tablets, laptops. It all worked great. However, we ran into issues with a specific client device, and it was the handheld scanners. And when the users were walking around the warehouse, the scanners, even though they had a good connection, it seemed, were just randomly dropping off the network. And we're like, why is this happening? And it was a really difficult thing for us to try and identify the issue and then resolve it. So we, we witnessed firsthand coming back to the warehouse, and there was literally the, the people in the warehouse, they had the scanners, they were right by APs, and all of a sudden, they would get disconnected. And it was quite a... Uh, obvious disconnection because the scanners would like scream at you. They'd go, beep, 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 beep. Oh, it's like been disconnected from the network. It's like, okay, well, what's going on here then? So anyway, long story short, because we like to get to the, to the conclusion first to keep everyone interested. Not very interested. The issue here was actually um, that the client devices, the scanners in, in question, they actually didn't support 802.11v. So how did we get to the conclusion that this was what was causing the problem with the network? And when we disabled 11v from the SSID, actually the scanners, they stopped dropping off the network. And the biggest thing that they didn't like was the disassociation imminent, because they were actually very happily associated, even at a weaker signal strength level. So when the infrastructure was trying to enforce that client roam, the scanners were like, hold on a second, I don't want to do that. I'm quite happy connected here. They hadn't even started that roaming process. Now, this was going back a few years ago. And the way that we identified this was doing a wireless packet capture and then analyzing the frames. So how did we do this? Well, we're going to be looking at the protocol, so we need to do some protocol analysis. So we used the Psychic and the capture feature functionality to set the channels of the radios of the Psychic to capture on the same channels that our client device and the access point was working on. So let me just talk you through the steps required that we went through to do this level of analysis. So number one, we have to identify what the channels of the access points of the radios that they're using around us, 
And once we've identified that, we need to verify realistically that the client device is also connected to the AP on that channel, because we want to be capturing on the same channel that the client device is associated with the access point. And when you're in an environment where you've got multiple access points, multiple different radios, there's a chance that the client device can hop between multiple different radios and different channels. And once you've identified that, you then start the wireless packet capture, you start going through watching the frames build up, build up, build up, and hopefully you capture the frames that you're interested in. Once you have that information, then you are ready to then share that to your device that you like to analyze the uh, frames on, and then you can do the protocol analysis. That's quite a few steps that we went through there to, to do that. And let me just show you how we could have done that using the Analyzer application. So first of all, our network overview, where we can see what's going on around us, all the different access points of radios. Identify here my access points that are using different channels, so 157 on 5, and I think it was like something else on 6 gigahertz. Once we've had 21 on 6 gigahertz, I then go to the packet capture feature inside of Analyzer. I set the scanning channels to be on those two channels, and then we begin the packet capture. Once the capture's finished, I just share it, like you would share I don't know, anything else on an iOS, and then open that and frame capture that I've just captured on my protocol analysis tool. I'm using Wireshark here. We saw Peter use OmniPeak earlier. You can use whichever one. But that packet capture, I think, was around 30 seconds, and there's already like thousands of rows to go through. And if you're not too familiar with doing this, it might be a little bit of a scary or daunting task. When Peter was showing OmniPeak earlier, I looked around the room and I could say there's like two sets of faces I would see. It's like, first set of faces like, wow, this is super cool. I'm loving this. This is really nerdy and geeky. I can get really into this. And then there's the other set of people going, wow, I have no idea what he's talking about. That is so much to try and look at and analyze. So inside of here, what we're actually trying to look for is the, something that's called the association request. And the reason why we're looking for the association request is because this is where we can find information about what the device is capable of supporting. And it's actually really important that you look for the association request, because if I now show you here the difference between the same device, a probe request and an association request, one example here, on the left-hand side on the probe request, if you can see, the device is effectively saying that it supports one spatial stream. Same device, same Apple device and uh, on the probe request, and then you look at that on the association request, and all of a sudden now, it's saying it could do two spatial streams. And I was like, why? Like, why? Why are client devices lying about what they're capable of doing? So I did what any modern Wi-Fi engineer would do, and I asked AI, I'll save you the trouble of reading that nonsense because there is no good conclusion that came from this, and I still have no real logical reason as to why they are doing that. But it's something for us to definitely consider and bear in mind. And that's what brings us to the client analysis feature with the Psychic 2 in the Echo Analyzer application. And this is kind of like a nice full circle moment for me, and hopefully some of you in the room that was in Prague last year, because we first announced that we were going to be bringing you this feature in Prague last year. And then today, I'm actually going to demo to you live it working. So I think that's quite a nice full circle moment. So the reason why this is such a nice feature is because it makes something that was extremely complex to be able to go and do before a lot easier, accessible, and simpler for more of us to be able to go and do on a more regular basis. So it simplifies that complex troubleshooting we had to go through before, and now we can do it in a much nicer, simpler way. So I'm actually going to try uh, do a live demo first, and let me just cast. Okay. So I've got my Analyze application, and I've got the Psychic 2. And you can see down the bottom here, we have our client analysis option, if I just click on that. And what I actually want to try and do, I just want to talk a little bit about what is happening in the, in the back end, what we do when you fire up the client analysis. So first of all, this view is OK, but my favorite view is actually in the top right-hand corner. If I click on that table view, it will now like show you in a bit of a nicer way the uh, client devices around you that you can see. So what I'm doing is just bringing my device close to my psychic. As you bring it close to the psychic, it will detect as you get nearby to it. So now it can see, let me just figure out what my uh, MAC address is. Now it can see my device. I just simply click on the device. And now what the psychic will actually do is it will dedicate a channel, uh, sorry, a radio of 
the uh, sidekick to, to the channel that your client device is associated to on the access point, so we can make sure we're capturing all of the frames that are being sent really, really quickly. And now I can see a lot of information, so how close by the devices to the sidekick, the information about the network that is connected to. So first of all, on the top right-hand side, if we look at that, you can see the channel, the bandwidth, the encryption, management frame protection, the basic rate, primary coverage and secondary coverage, and the SSID. And what's the nice thing about this is you could see here quite quickly is if perhaps maybe you have one of those sticky client issues that we've heard about today. If you notice that actually the signal of the access point that your device was connected to was to an AP further away, and there's a better connection to another access point closer by, that's an indication that maybe your device hasn't roamed. So that could be um, one of those sticky client problems. And then if we just scroll down slightly, uh, what we can see here, this is where we can start to do some of the client analysis, but it does require us as the user to do a couple of things. So we do try and guide you through that. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that text in a moment's time. But we need to capture the association request frame to be able to see what my device is capable of doing. So all I need to do really here is just toggle my Wi-Fi off. And then if I toggle it back on and I reassociate, and full disclosure, you may have to do this once or twice for it to, to work, because it is uh, happening very quickly. What we will see, at some point, hopefully, is the details of what my device can do. There we go. So now, oh, it did see it, and then it lost it. OK. One more time, and then I'll just show it in the slide in a second. The, uh, the live demo gods don't want to be good to me for this and that. Oh, there we go. OK. So now, we, now it's got it. So like, the associate, because we're looking for that one special frame, sometimes you might have to toggle your Wi-Fi off and on a couple of times. Because you know, we know how fast Wi-Fi travels over the air. There is a chance we may not capture it the first time. But now what we can see is the channels that my device supports, which is a very interesting thing to be able to see. Because let's say, for example, my device didn't support between channels 149 to 165. However, maybe you've configured your infrastructure in a way that has those channels enabled. Your device, as it would go past those access points, if they were using those channels, just wouldn't see the network. So therefore, it looks as if you've got a coverage hole or potentially no signal for your device to be able to connect to. And then you can see other things here, like the channel width that we support, the uh, manager frame protection, 11R, KMV, and the Wi-Fi standards. So I'm going to talk about these in a, a few moments time, a little bit more. But the fact now that we can just quickly capture this information inside the Analyzer app, I think is very helpful. But also, we have access to other information here we can see as well. So the MCS index of my device that is currently connected to, number of spatial streams. We can see the current data rate, retry rate. But also, we can see a lot of the uh, expert information and the frame breakdown between the uh, control frames, management frames, and the data frames. And as an example, if you're looking at the control frames, and maybe you see that, hold on a second, I've got a lot of uh, RTS, CTS happening between my client device and this access point, that could be a really good indication that maybe you have a hidden no problem in your network as well. So yeah, that's some of the information that we can see here with the client analysis feature, which I think is a very nice welcome addition to the Analyzer app. And let me stop sharing here and just go back to my slides. OK, cool. So I did put together a couple of uh, slides and stuff in case the demo didn't work. And there's just one thing that I wanted to really call out and highlight to you. It's something that I actually personally wasn't aware of until I really went through this process with the development team. So what we have here is I configured one SSID called uh, Client Analysis Test 1, and I'm using an iPhone 15 Pro. And when you look at the capabilities in a second when it runs through the, the video again, what you're going to notice is it says that it's not supported for manager frame protection 11R and 11K. And I was like, well, hold on a second. This is an iPhone 15 Pro. Okay, It's not the latest. It's like at the time, 16 was the latest. But 15 isn't that old, so it surely should support some of those things, right? So then I connected my device to a different SSID, same access point, same client device. And it's now called Client Analysis Test 2. But now when you look at what happens when I toggle the Wi-Fi off and on, on this example here, you will see, wait for it. There we 
There we go. So here, now it says that it is required for management frame protection, and it does support 11 R and K. And I was like, well, well, why is that? And again, coming back to that thing we mentioned earlier around client devices lying, what we found is even if you've got a capture and capture the association request, based on how the infrastructure is configured, the client device will mimic what the SSID is configured to do. So that's one thing to watch out for, and that's why we have that little text there, basically, and just so you're side by side. Same access point, same client device, same test, different results. Um, that's, and, and this is how I had the networks configured, so you can see it from the uh, configuration of the controller side, is that basically I turned off everything on one SSID and I turned everything on another SSID. And that's why we put this little bubble here to try and guide you. When you go to do this kind of testing yourselves, the best chance you have to get the most accurate information is if you use a network that has everything enabled. Because in that case, as the device goes to associate, if it cannot support it, it will actually say it's not supported, rather than trying to mimic what the uh, infrastructure is trying to do. So I found that really interesting to understand. So yeah, the other interesting things you can see here, we've talked about the MCS rate, retry rate, looking at the different breakdown of all the different frames. And I did put these in here as a kind of like backup in case the live demo didn't work. So I'm just gonna skip through a couple of these. Um, but the thing that I just wanted to point out that now is the fact that something that was really complex and took a lot of steps to go through and do before, now we can do something that is a lot easier to be able to have access to to get that level of information. So I think this is a, a really nice way not to just uh, troubleshoot Wi-Fi networks. So of course, if you ever get into that scenario where you are troubleshooting an issue, you can use this feature. But also, you can use this to understand when you're designing a Wi-Fi network, is the way that I've configured my network gonna work for my important client devices? And sometimes you'll be in a situation when you go through the initial requirements gathering with your customers or stakeholders, that they will tell you about the client devices, and if you try and look up a data sheet for a client device, you might find that, yes, this data sheet tells you everything that the client device can support. And you might find in another data sheet for another device, it just says, yeah, this does Wi-Fi, and you're like, great, what Wi-Fi? Uh, and then you need to figure out what it can do. So you can use that to make sure that you can figure your network in a way that's gonna be best supported for your client devices as well. So, if you look at all of the features we have in the Analyzer application now, I think it's a real powerhouse for troubleshooting. You can run a speed test alongside seeing the spectrum, understand if you have interference or ISP or Wi-Fi issue. Network overview, see how the networks around you are configured without having to log onto a controller. I know a lot of us here have probably fixed a bunch of Wi-Fi networks just from doing this level of scanning. And now being able to understand how clients behave on your network as well really ties in that full kind of story and package there. The last thing I just wanted to quickly mention is a new program that we announced at UCLA that some of you may or may not have heard of is a speed test certified. If you didn't hear about it, at a high level, think Michelin star for restaurants meets connectivity for venues. And Alan Blake, in the room at the back, he's asked me to show all of you his great dance moves. Um, and I don't know why he asked me to show you these, because I've never seen someone clear a dance floor so quickly with some dad dancing. But actually, what he asked me to say to everybody, if you come and find him, he would love to show you a little bit under the hood of what is going on with the whole Speed Test Certified project. If you want to know a little bit more about that, come and find Alan. If you don't know Alan, just give a little wave at the back. There he is. Come and find Alan. He'll be happy to talk to you about anything more about Speed Test Certified. I'll be happy to talk to you about anything Ekaha related. And yeah, thank you for having me back at WLPC.